Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to be sharing the five most life-altering daily routines. Now listen, a couple of these you've surely heard of and I've talked about them before as well, but I need you to know that routines throughout our day create a lot of space for us to avoid decision fatigue um, and overwhelm and to automate some things. But it's not just that, they help us transition from one part of our day into another. Now, before I start talking about these routines, I wanna make sure that everyone knows that these routines are for everyone. And I'll be offering some modifications based on whether you work from home or you're a stay-at-home parent or maybe you're retired and how you may want to transition some of these routines to work in your own life. But outside of morning and bedtime routines, there are a few others that we all need to be incorporating into our lives to make our lives go a little bit smoother, a little bit easier, reduce our stress and overwhelm, and free up some of the time and energy and mind space we need for the things we love and that matter most to us. Now, if you're new here, my name is Cassie Feld, and this is Upcycled Adulting, where we help you upcycle your real life into your best life by creating healthy habits, overcoming obstacles, and growing to accomplish your goals. Now, I struggled to create routines and habits for almost my entire life. Um, and once I started really nailing down how to create routines, it was really life altering. If you need some help to create habits or create routines, be sure to check my library. I have tons of content giving you some great simple tips um, to help you start incorporating this into your life, even if you have always struggled with habit and routine creation. So let's get started talking about these five life altering habits. Number one is the AM routine. It's your morning routine or your wake up routine, whatever you like to call it. If you haven't checked it out yet, I have several pieces of content about creating a really amazing morning routine. And I also have an additional supporting content piece about how to do it if you're a night owl, because it's a little different. I know. I am a night owl, but basically having a set of things that you do when you first wake up in the morning that help kick your day off well and help you transition into the busyness of your day is really, really beneficial. Now, these might be simple things like just washing your face and brushing your teeth. Maybe you make your bed, do a workout, whatever it is that fits in your life. It's really important to be aware that your routines don't have to be one hour long, super complicated things to be considered a routine. Some of my routines take 10 to 15 minutes and that works for me and it may work for you as well. But just creating that set of things that you do automatically to help you move into the next part of your day is really, really beneficial. And that starts as soon as you wake up in the morning. The second routine is the starting work routine or starting the effort of your day routine. So whether you're a stay at home parent or you're retired or you work in the home or out of the home, transitioning from a space of your morning mellow time or your morning routine time or your morning chaos into the start of productive, um, mindful work for your day is really, really important. Now, I have always worked from home and I've seen a lot of people talking about the work from home challenge with how do you actually get going in your day? How do you divide what you're doing for work and what you're doing for home? And by the way, this is also true if you're a stay at home parent, because I think it's really important to create a very specific intentional part of your day where you say, this is my job for the day and an intentional part of your day where you say, and now I'm not 100% holding this bag and you share some of that responsibility. When you start work, it can be very helpful to start with a commute that helps transition your mind. That may be listening to a podcast, that might be listening to an audiobook, something geared toward your work life to help you transition in there. Um, and if you work from home, it can be really helpful to leave your house and go for a walk to the end of the block and come home. 
to create a faux commute because there's something about that that helps you check into your office and out of your house rather than feeling like you're home all day and so it all just starts to blend together, right? So it's important that we give ourselves those breaks. I like to include things about starting my workday, like checking my email and checking my schedule. So my start of workday is pretty simple. I do a little bit of commute. I do a check-in um, with my employees. I do an email check and I check my schedule and get going on my work. But doing those things helps set me up to get started in my workday even though I work from home. Number three is your end of workday routine. And this is a similar thing. This book ends your workday. So what you wanna do is again, you can do that little commute that you did in the morning and you're gonna set yourself up to transition back home. So maybe in your commute home, you're listening to some of your favorite music or you are stopping for a home errand, or you're doing something related to your home life, all right? Now, if you work from home, or if you are a stay-at-home parent, this is a space where I highly recommend that you transition into your home life by doing something a little bit relaxing to you, something that gives you a moment to come up for air and to separate your evening and home life from your work day. It's really important to not carry work into your home life. Now, at this point, I like to again, check my email. I like to go ahead and recheck my schedule. I move work items um, to the next day or later in the week if I didn't get them completed. And I wrap everything up for work, put it all away. I close the laptop. I do the whole thing. Now, listen, y'all, I don't generally close all the tabs on my laptop. It's okay. Um, if you don't do that either, but I do make sure I don't have more than like 10 open. Um, so I don't get overwhelmed in the morning because I tend to be a little bit, um, a little bit slow with the tech and I get overwhelmed easily with tech. So I try to get some of them bookmarked and closed and all that good stuff. Um, this is also a space. A lot of times I love to cook. So I start thinking about what I might want to cook for dinner. I generally have a meal plan laid out. Um, so I start kind of thinking about when do I want to get dinner going? Um, is there a show I want to catch tonight? What are my plans for the evening? So this is a nice place to transition out of work and into home. Number four is the witching hour routine. Now the witching hour routine is generally right when you get home from work or right when the kids get home from school. There's this period of time in the evening. It's not just babies who have this. Um, older kids have this too and we as adults have it too. Where we come home and we all get a little bit anxious and irritable and overwhelmed because there are a lot of things going on in the evening. Um, perhaps we have to get dinner ready. We might have activities. Maybe there's homework to be done. There tends to be a lot of stuff. And then there's people coming and going and everyone's kind of bringing the energy from their day into the house. And it can be a lot. Somebody had a rough day at school. Somebody's really excited about what happened today. Someone else is just tired or they're feeling a little burnt out and everyone's bringing that energy in. And sometimes that pot gets a little rank. And so we end up with more heightened emotion, more reactivity, um, more struggles and more challenges. So in the witching hour, meaning when everyone gets home and we all kind of have these things um, coming up and we're getting a little you know, tight, it can be really helpful to have 10 or 15 minutes that we reconnect with the other people in our house. One of the things we like to do in my house is go around the table and say, what's the thing? What was the best part of your day today? What was something that was a challenge or something that you learned today? Um, and kind of let everyone have a moment to be like, this was a great thing that happened to me. This was something that was a little challenging, or this is something that I learned, or this was, you know, something that was unexpected in my day. Um, and no one has to share something that was tough because we don't all have that, but we do make sure that everyone shares something that they're grateful for, proud of or happy about from their day. Um, and this is also a great time to have a little healthy snack, get a glass of water. Cause y'all, if you're dehydrated, you're going to be irritable. I know that's one of the big secrets that no one knows. Um, but having this little routine, um, I know a, when you have school age kids, it's like come in the house, get all of your stuff put away, unpack your backpack, wash your hands, come to the, come to the table. Let's all have a little snack 
and some water. Let's talk about the best part of our day, what may have been challenging and how we can maybe support each other and what our plans are for the evening. And just having that little transition into getting back into home life, getting reconnected to the family, feeling really heard and supported can make a huge difference in how the rest of your evening goes. Now that all of my kids are adults, and I am an empty nester. Um, what we tend to do now is um, my partner and I will make dinner. I'll make dinner. Um, we will chat about what happened in the day. We also work together. So a lot of times before we get into making dinner, we kind of unwind whatever might still need to be done tomorrow. Um, we do a touch base there. And then we get dinner going. We have dinner. We clean up the kitchen. We set up our coffee for the next morning. I water plants a couple days a week. And then we transition into our evening. And a lot of times through this process, we'll start talking about, do we want to play Scrabble tonight? Do we have a show on Netflix we're trying to catch up on? Um, do we have some other commitment? And that way, we are reconnected after a long day of work. And we have a plan going forward for our evening. And we get some of that good stuff done. Now, if you have kids home, and you want to have a witching hour routine and an after dinner routine, I highly recommend it because it can really help um, get things set up for the next day. Like after dinner, um, we clean the kitchen together. We make lunches for the next day together. We set up the coffee together. Maybe we feed the pets, things like that. Um, we do a little set of household chores. We do a little tidy time. Um, maybe kids do homework while grownups are getting some of this other stuff done. Um, but that way we actually have a little structure to checking things off the list. And I have to tell you that this makes it a lot easier. It kind of trains your brain to know what's coming next and to be ready to do that homework or to be ready to take on that next thing. Um, it automates these things. It makes them take less time and less mental energy. And that keeps everyone in a much better mood um, and gets everything done with a lot less stress and overwhelm. And then number five is, of course, the bedtime routine. Listen, bedtime routines, in my opinion, are the most important routines of the day. Now, just recently, I was on social media and someone was asking about their child who gets bored with the bedtime routine and then um, starts to become resistant to it and gets rowdy with it. Now, listen, if you have a child like this, please listen to me when I tell you this. The bedtime routine doesn't have to be exactly the same every night. So you could have different components. And by the way, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video about this in particular, but you can have different components that represent the same things in the bedtime routine, meaning you want your child to brush their teeth and wash their face. One night they do a teeth brushing race. The next night they do a different tooth brushing game. Then they do wash the face first, then brush the teeth, brush the teeth first, then wash the face. Different things like that to kind of mix it up and make it still interesting for kids can be really helpful. This is particularly true if you have children who have, for example, ADHD or they just struggle a little bit with, um, they get that, you know, that boredom fatigue, right? We get decision fatigue. Sometimes kids get some boredom fatigue. You can have um, different activities that you might do in the evening. Like one evening, you tell each other stories. One evening, you read a book. One evening. And now, just so you know, and I had suggested this, um, because I think this can be helpful as well, is you can create jars for each of these categories. Have the child pull one thing out of each jar. Like write it on a popsicle stick or a little piece of paper. Have them pull one thing out of each jar. So there's a hygiene jar that has all the different ways that you do face washing and teeth brushing. And then there is a, you know, rest time jar that has a few different options of what we can do to unwind, whether that's reading a story or listening to quiet music and rubbing their back or whatever that looks like. And so, and they could just pick from each jar and make it totally random. And it could be like a little game and then you go through all the things. One of the important things to remember here, as always with kids, is only give them two options. Um, if you're giving them choices, meaning, um, do you want to read a story or do you want me to rub your back and listen to some music? Do you want, if you start adding multiple options, do you want me to read a story, do a shadow puppet show, rub your back and listen to music, just tell, tell silly stories together. If you start doing that, 
it becomes decision fatigue for them and they're likely to be irritable and checked out. So just two options, both of which you're happy with, this or that. And then if they are um, resistant, then you just remind them. Remember, you're the one who picked this. I didn't pick it. Um, because kids love being autonomous and giving them that autonomy in their routines can be really, really helpful. Now, the bedtime routine optimally should be made up of two components, reset and rest. If you are not familiar with how to build a bedtime routine, please make sure that you check out my video specifically for building bedtime routines, including the night owl bedtime and morning routine tips video, um, because it'll be very, very helpful. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I am always creating more content to help you live a better and easier life so that you can live the life you've been dreaming of because the truth is you deserve it. You're here. I wish you the very best creating your routines. And please let me know if you would like a video regarding um, any of these routines for kids, like start a school day or um, bedtime or morning routines, things like that, because I'm so happy to create them. As many of you know, I raised five children, including two special needs kids who are neurodiverse. So um, I've become a little bit of an expert in creating routines for kids. That's what I'll say. All right. Well, I will catch you next time. And again, don't forget to subscribe. Bye, everyone.